For years, one thing about China's fighters seemed certain. Their engines were weak. They overheated, wore out fast, and forced China to rely on Russian parts just to keep planes in the air. So when a senior GE Aerospace executive stepped onto a stage in Washington and warned that China's engines are now closing the gap, the room froze. This was GE, the company that built the engines under half the aircraft in the sky. The company that always said China was decades behind. Yet suddenly, GE was no longer sure. So what did China build that made one of America's top engine makers speak out in public? To understand how we reached this moment, you need to know one thing. GE did not sound the alarm during a crisis. Not after a shootdown, not after a failed test, not after leaked intel. This warning came during a quiet briefing at the Mitchell Institute for Aerospace Studies, a place where American aerospace leaders normally speak with steady confidence. But this time, the tone was different. Steve Russell, the head of GE's Advanced Projects Unit, said something no one in the West expected to hear. China's engines are still behind, but the gap is shrinking faster than anyone thought. And it did not happen by luck. It happened because China has spent 20 years trying to solve one problem that kept its fighters from ever catching the United States. That problem was the engine. For decades, China could build the A-frame, the avionics, even stealth designs. But the engine was always the breaking point. It overheated, cracked and lost power. Pilots did not trust it, and commanders could not rely on it. Western analysts called it China's Achilles heel. A weakness so deep that it shaped everything from range to readiness to the number of jets China could keep in the sky at once. But while the world dismissed China as a follower, something else was happening behind the scenes. Factories were expanding. Research institutes were merging. Aero engine companies were being built from the ground up. And one by one, Chinese engineers began hitting milestones that Western experts said were still years away. This is where the story turns. Because the engines China is now testing and fielding are not prototypes hidden in a lab. They are flying on real fighters. They are powering heavy transports. They are taking roles once filled by Russian engines China could not produce on its own. This is the moment GE realized the old rulebook no longer applied. And to see why, we need to look at how China went from struggling with basic engine life to flying jets that forced America's top engineers to reassess the entire balance of power. China's engine problem was not a minor flaw. It was the one issue that shaped how the entire world judged its air power. For decades, China could design modern-looking fighters, but the engines inside them were a reminder that the country was still dependent on older Russian technology. The AL-31 engines kept China's aircraft flying, but they burned hot, needed constant attention, and wore out far faster than Western engines powering American fighters. This weakness created a simple narrative in the West. China could copy designs and build A-frames quickly, but the United States held an advantage it would never lose. Jet engines were viewed as too complex, too sensitive, and too dependent on generations of knowledge for China to catch up anytime soon. That belief made the United States feel comfortable. Even as China built larger fleets and produced more advanced jets, experts pointed to the engine bay and dismissed the threat. No matter how many J-10s or J-11s China built, they said, the United States would always have better propulsion, more range, an aircraft that stayed mission-ready far longer. But inside China, the mindset was the opposite. Instead of seeing engines as a permanent limitation, China treated them as a national project. Billions were poured into materials research, turbine labs, and new testing centers. Universities started training thousands of engineers specifically for propulsion work. State-owned companies were merged into large aviation groups with the single goal of designing the country's own engine family. Progress came slowly, but it came. Test cells ran longer, parts held together under higher temperatures, and failures that once shut down programs became lessons for the next round of prototypes. China was learning, step by step, even if the world barely noticed. What made this shift important was that the improvements were not dramatic or sudden. They were steady, predictable, and coming from a country with the resources to push harder every year. Western analysts began seeing hints of change, new engine factories under construction, increased procurement of high-temperature alloys, and longer maintenance intervals on Chinese jets. These quiet developments created the first signs of tension in Washington. Because if a nation keeps grinding at its biggest weakness, eventually the results start to show. And this is the point where China's engine story stops being predictable and starts becoming a problem for GE. China's first real step forward came with an engine called the WS-10. It was a turning point, even if it did not look like one at the start. When China began developing it in the 1990s, the WS-10 struggled. 
Only units overheated. Turbine blades cracked. Entire engines had to be pulled from jets long before they were ready. At first, the program seemed like proof that China was still decades behind. Even inside China, engineers admitted that the WS-10 was unreliable and needed far more work before it could replace Russian imports. But Beijing refused to let the project die. The WS-10 became a national priority. Funding increased. New research centers opened. Foreign materials were reverse engineered down to the microscopic level. Every test failure was documented, analyzed, and fed into the next round of prototypes. It was a slow climb, but a steady one. By the mid-2010s, something changed. A refined model known as the WS-10B began appearing on J-11B fighters, then on J-16s, then on the carrier-based J-15. The real milestone came with the J-10C, a single-engine fighter that relied entirely on one power plant. When the WS-10C variant powered the J-10C in frontline service, the aviation community took notice. This was no longer an experiment. This was an engine China trusted on its most advanced domestic fighter at the time. And the message was clear. China could now mass-produce a fighter engine that no longer needed Russian support. This alone was a major shift. For years, the West believed that China would always depend on Russia for propulsion. But as more J-10CS and J-16s rolled off the production line with Chinese built engines, that belief collapsed. Where the West saw a backup engine just a few years earlier, China now saw a platform to build upon. The WS-10 was not perfect, but it was reliable enough to serve as a foundation for a new generation of propulsion systems. It represented something even more important than performance. Control. China now had the ability to produce, maintain, and upgrade its fighters without waiting for anyone else. This is when American analysts began re-evaluating their assumptions. They expected China to produce a few working engines. Instead, China produced an entire fleet powered by domestic propulsion. And each year, the WS-10 quietly improved. Thrust increased. Reliability crept upward. Reports from Flight Global and Jane showed that Chinese pilots were flying more hours with fewer failures. This mattered for one simple reason. Fighter engines are not judged only by power. They are judged by consistency. If an engine can deliver stable thrust, survive long missions, and be repaired quickly, it becomes a strategic asset. And by the late 2010s, that is exactly what the WS-10 had become. It was no longer China's embarrassing weak link. It was now the backbone of the country's fighter fleet. But even as the WS-10 matured, China knew it still had a ceiling to break. A fighter like the J-20 needed something far stronger. Something that could supercruise, survive extreme heat, and rival engines built in the United States. This is what pushed China into its next, far more ambitious challenge. And it is where the story turns again. Because the engine China built next did not just close the gap. It forced GE to rethink what the next decade of air power might look like. The WS-10 gave China its first real foothold in fighter propulsion. But it was the next wave of engines that changed the conversation inside Washington. Because these engines were not meant to match older Russian designs. They were meant to challenge the engines inside America's most advanced aircraft. The centerpiece of that shift is the WS-15. It has been China's most ambitious engine project for almost three decades. Originally intended for the J-20 stealth fighter, it demanded a level of engineering China had never reached before. The engine needed to survive extreme heat, produce high thrust, and deliver stable performance at altitudes and speeds that push materials to their limit. For years, progress was slow. Early units failed during test runs. Turbine blades slipped out of tolerance. Temperatures spiked faster than engineers could control. Western analysts took these failures as proof China was still far away from mastering fifth-generation propulsion. Then the signs of progress began to appear. By 2023, Chinese state media and industry officials started hinting that the WS-15 had entered serial production. Short clips from test centers showed large turbofan engines running at full power for extended cycles. And in 2024, the most important confirmation appeared in the sky. High-resolution photos surfaced showing J-20A prototypes fitted with nozzles covered in yellow primer. They did not match any Russian engine. They matched the WS-15. Suddenly, this engine was no longer an idea on paper or rumor in online forums. It was flying. Reports indicated thrust levels above 36,000 pounds, possibly higher. If accurate, this would give the J-20 a performance profile far closer to the F-22 than anyone expected. Not equal but far closer than China had ever been before. The WS-15 alone would have been enough to unsettle Western analysts, but it did not stop there. 
China revealed another engine, the WS-19, designed for the J-35 carrier-based stealth fighter. This aircraft will be deployed on China's new carriers, giving the Navy a level of reach and air defense it never had before. The WS-19 is smaller than the WS-15, but it is built for the demanding conditions of carrier operations. Early assessments suggest it provides the thrust a stealth jet needs for catapult launches and combat maneuvers at sea. At the same time, a completely different engine appeared on China's largest aircraft, the WS-20. This was China's first large turbofan for heavy transports and tankers. For years, the Y-20 relied on old Russian D-30 engines, which limited range, payload, and efficiency. The WS-20 changed that. Photos and videos began circulating showing Y-20s fitted with a new engine, signaling that China had finally built a large high-bypass turbofan on its own soil. This matters because heavy transports shape the entire pace of modern warfare. They move fuel, troops, supplies, and equipment. With the WS-20, China is no longer tied to engines built during the Cold War. It now has the ability to expand its reach far beyond its borders, supported by an engine built at home. Taken together, the WS-15, WS-19, and WS-20 form something the United States never expected to see so soon. A complete engine lineup, light fighters, heavy fighters, stealth jets, and transports, all powered by engines that China built itself. And that is the moment GE saw the real threat. Because once a country builds multiple engines across multiple platforms, it is no longer catching up. It is shaping a future where its aircraft no longer depend on anyone else. As China's engine family took shape, another story unfolded in the background. One that made Washington even more uneasy. For years, American companies operated with the belief that their technical edge was safe. Jet engine metallurgy, cooling systems, and digital controls were some of the most closely guarded industrial secrets in the world. They were protected not only by patents, but by experience. It takes generations of trial and error to learn how to build a turbine blade that survives the heat inside a modern fighter. But as China pushed forward, the United States noticed a pattern. Technical papers, supply contracts, and court cases revealed attempts to gain access to Western turbine know-how. The most notable case involved a former GE engineer convicted for trying to steal trade secrets linked to turbine technology. It was not speculation. It was a confirmed example of how valuable this knowledge had become. This created a new kind of pressure on America's engine makers. They were no longer competing only with China's official programs. They were competing with a nation determined to close the gap by any means available. At the same time, the United States faced its own internal challenges. Engine development had slowed. Defense contract arrived in small batches. Long-term investments were difficult for companies to justify. Factories sat idle between programs. Suppliers struggled to stay afloat. It was a fragile system, held together by a small number of companies that depended on predictable orders. China did not have this problem. It funded entire industrial chains with long-term planning. It built new facilities years before engines were ready. It took risks that Western firms could not afford. By late 2024, the tone inside Washington changed. Pentagon reports began warning that China's Air Force was closing the distance faster than expected. Then GE broke its silence. A senior executive publicly stated that China's engines were catching up. Not equal, not superior, but close enough to force the United States to rethink its own timeline for the next generation of propulsion. This was a moment the world realized the gap was no longer guaranteed. And it leads directly into the hardest question of all. If China keeps advancing at this pace, how long before the United States loses the comfort of knowing its engines will always be better? China's new engines did more than narrow a gap. They removed the one weakness the United States relied on to stay comfortably ahead. The WS-15, WS-19, and WS-20 are not perfect, but they are no longer the distant prototypes Washington expected to see at this stage. And that is what shook GE. Not that China is equal today, but that the curve is bending faster than anyone planned for. Because reliability is the last barrier left. Once China pushes that number higher, even by a small margin, the advantage shifts from whoever has the better engine to whoever can build the most of them. Engine programs deeper inside China's labs are moving faster than the ones the world can see. The question now is not whether China catches up. It is what happens when the engine we have not seen yet finally appears. And when GE has to break its silence again.